Good morning, channel. I, um, I'm not 100%. I may or may not have made this laptop tutorial video of some sort or discussed it. Maybe more in depth on a video, but let's just assume that I haven't. And perhaps I should show how I do my slap chop stuff. It may or may not be different from what anybody else does. I don't know, but I feel like it should be part of my content since it's a several piece. Separate, this is fuck. What's the word for something that's important? That one. It's an important part of what I do to get these paint jobs done really quick and they come out real good, so I guess I'll show it. Um, so at first here you are looking at an unpainted miniature. Um, good and great, it turned out fine. Um, you can see it there, yep, that's definitely a miniature there. But um, in order to paint it, you're gonna need some things, like that might be coarse enough texture to get paint to stick to it as is. Um, that's one reason you prime a mini. But the other reason is to lay down the first, the base color of whatever you're doing. And traditionally, a lot of painters, you will see, will do just like an all black. Sometimes you'll see them do white, but majority of painters, I have seen will usually prime them with black. This is automotive sandable primer. I don't pay for army painter primer. I don't pay for Citadel primer. Good God, it's double the price of the other can. I use sandable automotive primer, have forever, works great. It is indeed sandable. So if you're like gap filling and you're not like where you want it to be happy wise, you can sand it and then prime so you get a smooth lack of a line or whatever words um anyway but it does create the nozzle on it does a nice fine mist which is suitable for miniature painting um you don't lose detail even on these super detailed miniatures that i have printed um with like 25 micron resolution you don't lose that with the auto body primer so there's no reason you can't or shouldn't use it and then i do some stuff and then the final result is this which as you can see, we now have a nice highlighting of the highlights and a nice shadowing of the shadows. So it's like, oh, how do we get to that point? Well, as I said, there's probably videos on YouTube that'll tell you like you kind of just kind of sort of dry brush stuff on. You, like you would be dry brushing a white paint for very often, but I have a quote unquote two step process that I do mine and I guess I'll show it in detail. I don't know, you know, nobody asked for it, but perhaps someone would like to see it, so that's what we're going to do. Anyway, so yeah, we've started with, uh, we've coated it with auto body primer. I mean, standard stuff, make sure your can's not cold, make sure you shake it up really good so you get a nice, fine, even mist, otherwise it can turn out a little fuzzy. Um, I used to soak my cans in warm water, but don't do that because if water gets in your nozzle, it fucks it up and then you're you're in trouble. So. I'll usually actually like just stick it under my armpit and let my body heat kind of warm it up for about five minutes before I give it a spray spray. Uh, that's usually fine. Um, you know, you don't want to do anything too stupid and heat it up where the can can explode. So, you know, body heat seems to be okay. Or just if you're in a warm enough room, it's like 70, 80 degrees. It shouldn't be a major issue for you unless you're like in the cold. Um, anyway, yeah, evenly spray it, like rotate the mini, make sure you get it from a high angle, get it from a low angle. You can actually still see, perhaps, I don't know if the video shows, this is a translucent green resin, but just do your best to make sure you've covered all of it because this is the foundation for your color. This is the shadow. Shadow should be everywhere, and then we're gonna start hiding that shadow by faking the sun. How are we going to do that? Two brushes. The first brush that we're going to use is for the gray. The gray is gonna be in more places than the white because it'll be like kinda shadow, but not really shadow. Kinda some lights getting there. We have a smaller used makeup brush for that. We're just kind of kind of smack it everywhere. Um, on that, it's not so much of a dry brush. You're literally just trying to coat everything that's not up under stuff, right? Just coat as much as possible. The lines, the little cracks, those will stay black on that. But you know, you, you kind of, I'll show you in a minute, but after you're done with that, then the white goes on with a thicker brush. And the reason we do that is because it can't get in all the nooks and crannies that the gray can. So your shadows stay like true to where they need to be. Like there should be some gray underneath the, the ribs of that alien, but not black. And the white should really only be on the top and the places that are easy to get on that brush. And you'll get a fairly realistic lighting effect that you will be applying paint on top of to get a satisfactory gradient of your colors. Fancy words and stuff, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, I'll show you what I do here, but basically like I use un, uh, uncut Liquitex gray and white for these two. You don't want your paint too watery, it will not dry brush well. 
And what you do is you just put a little, put a little squirt of it in here, a little dab, and you gray. And then you want to have like a paper towel. And normally with dry brushing, what you're going to do with a paper towel is you're going to unload your brush. Not on the gray, not today. Because what you're trying to do is make sure that the paint is evenly distributed throughout the tip of your brush. You don't have any chunks. Because what I'll usually be doing, I'll still usually be kind of like swishing it and then boom, 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 and then touch my hand and make sure that it doesn't have big solid streaks. As long as it's a uniform uh, amount of gray across the whole brush stroke on the back of my hand, it's good to hit this brush with. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll see what that looks like when we get done. Okay, and welcome back to part two of the stuff. And yeah, the gray has been applied, as you can see. My eye hand coordination is not good, as you can see. Shop for shit. Uh, anyway, yeah, here we go. The gray's on here. Um, I got pretty much everywhere, but you can see like inside of the coat, it's still kind of black. That's what you want. You want some dark areas in there. Um, you're just trying to like cut anywhere that like this is gonna be, you know, some tiny little areas are gonna have no light, but most of it will be hit with light. Um, now you may ask yourself, well, there's fire on this sword. And you could do this process and continue it by putting a lot of light manually on the fire and around the fire. You could do that, but you could also do glazes, which is usually what I do in these scenarios, to illuminate the sword and then light up the areas around the sword. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to use the white paint, the big brush, and just kind of hit the edges, the outside, the tops, to just illuminate those areas. And I figure I may as well just make this whole video like the painting and stuff to you so you can see how it impacts the paint and how it goes on the subject. So go ahead and do the white as I stated and I'll, I'll be right back. Now real quick look here as we work. You see how there's like a little matted area in the center? That is going to leave a streak. Let's see what it does on my arm. You don't want it to do that on your mini. So you just got to keep keep rubbing it until it works throughout the whole tip itself and until those little chunks go away because you want an even distribution of that white color. You might have to put more paint on the tip. You probably will because it's a big brush with a big ass barrel. Until we start to get that tip point to go away. Come on you rascal. Let's keep working painting. Keep swishing a round till we get what we want. Because it takes a lot of paint to fill this brush tip. It's not made for paint. So what do you want? It does the job well so whatever. Um, let's test it again. All right, that's a better even distribution of color. I mean, it does look a little pinched, pinched in the tip there, whatever, I'll just keep fucking working it a little bit more. Anyway, we know what we're looking for now, so you know when you're ready to do, and I'll go ahead and do it, and I'll come back. And here we have a mini that is slappy choppy primed in my method. I did actually screw up a little bit. I got a little too much on the body of my brush, but it didn't really show too bad because when I brush, I usually do it in a circular manner so it doesn't leave brush strokes. Um, so it will just look like it's super illuminated, I guess, in that spot, or whatever. And the other spots where it's a little heavy. But a little heavy is not really that bad in most instances. You just want to make sure you have a nice contrast between light and heavy, depending on the area. See, like, oh, that's dark because there's a shadow of the hand over that corner of the cape or whatever. There's not really much light under the cape either, right? Okay. So, yeah. There you go. You know how to do this now. So, I guess we'll go ahead and see how this applies. I'm immediately thinking about my colors. I'm going to tell you that I don't think too long about my colors because for me personally, my brain just fucking overloads. If I think about something too long, I just get all stupid and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing and then I just short circuit. So I just immediately go and I'm just like, what do I think off the top of my head? I'll, I guess he's a lich. I don't know. Whatever. He's fucking undead wizard guy. Green. Green for the skin. We'll start with green. We're doing base colors right now. I went and Googled like online and looked at liches on D&D. &D. I don't know what reason they're all wearing red. It's probably their racist religion or some shit, whatever. Red for the robes. Immediately thinking maybe some oranges in there too. For whatever reason, it's kind of close to it on the color wheel and it on my add a nice variety. Jesus Christ, I'm a mess. Uh, anyway, the armor. We'll probably have to go back over because I'm going to do a metallic. I'm going to do the cold open by Turbo Dork. And I will probably have to, on those little armor pieces you see there, paint over them with a black. We're gonna do Musu black because I have discovered recently that this stuff is the best black to paint pearlescent colors over on top of being like the blackest black. It's great for that too. It's great stuff. So this is what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna start with the skin. Gonna have to break this tutorial up in chunks because I'm about to have to start my job at work in about 20 minutes. So we'll start with this process and then we'll pick up where I left off and eventually this will be a completed video full of colors. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do these colors and then come back when we're gonna do some more colors. 
All right, so here we are. We have done the the green, the malignant green, and the red. I changed my mind. I did not want the orange on here. I actually started mixing the red with the purple alchemy for the robes. I just like the color mix better, so I, I did. So I guess the next thing I'll probably do, the last thing I'm going to do is the armor, because I don't need anything on top of that moosey black other than the pearlescent that I want on there. Um, I'll probably do the shoulder skulls and like pallid bone, any other skulls with pallid bone, probably do the base, all that jazz. There's a book inside of his little waist thing, I'll paint it too. Um, the blade will probably be some kind of a met regular metallic. Flames, I don't know yet. So, TBD, TBD, TBD. All right, so here it is now. I have done the armor with the uh, Musu Black, and then I used, what did we use today? Oh, we used Cold Open today on the armor. It just does really good on the black paint. And then how visible it'll be on the sword I did with it too. But it's kind of this like really dark black with some neat kind of blue pearlescent stuff going on there. And I guess I'll probably do on the sword, I'll do the Prism Power as a Zenithal metallic flame on it. It would look kind of cool. Um, we did just some green on the base with the speed paints. So it said the Absolution Green, uh, some gold for the little runes or whatever. And I guess I'll do the Prism Power on the sword and I'll start doing some washes. And then we'll do some glazes to kind of green up some lighter areas of the skin and wrap it up. I'll be back. Welcome back. <clears throat> and now we did the uh, the twin flames on the sword there. Some blue and, and pink fire. Washers on the body with a green wash. Some red washes on the on the on the cape. Some soft tones <clears throat> on the on the gold runes. And on some of the little bony stuff like skulls and such. <clears throat> really coming up to kind of a finish line point, if you will. The next thing we're gonna do, actually I did a little dot of green for the eyes. Let that dry. I'm gonna hit it with some matte varnish to lock in everything we've done because too much liquid reactivation is gonna start fucking up the speed paints over our uh, slap chopping. Uh, but yeah, let this dry, matte varnish, and then I got some 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 uh, <clears throat> green flame. I'm gonna cut it with some glaze and glaze up some of the muscle stuff, and then we'll call it a day on this piece. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so. Uh, I know my uh, tutorials and stuff are a hot mess, but I hope that relatively has shown you so far how to do this. So let's wrap up that last little bit of work. I'm gonna hit it with a hairdryer, speed up that drying process on those last little bit of washes, matte varnish, glaze it up, wrap it up. Be back in a few. And here it is, glazed up and wrapped up and all that jazz. And um, did what I said I was gonna do. Just put some gloss back over the armor, did the glazes, I went over it with another wash after the glaze because I greened it up, but we lost a little bit of the detail in the zombie flesh. Brought it back with a green wash on top of the glazes. Really got some nice stuff popping there. The look I wanted. And um, what else happened here? Um, shit. Oh yeah, on the base I also took this uh, disgusting slime. I cut it with a little bit of glaze just to kind of do a little bit of it. I just wanted the slimy looking shit on top of some of the tiles and then um, way back over that with a green glaze or green, green wash. Sorry. Get your facts straight, Logan. And uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, it's a Lich King. It's cool. And I hope you can see now how a foundation of some slap drop can make a, a nice product for you to kind of build your colors on, build it up and end up with a nice final product. It didn't take long. There's maybe like an hour, hour and a half worth of work in this total if I had to guess. So it's doable. You can do it too. Thanks for coming in. Try it out. See what you think.